All right. Zach Wild and Zach Sabbath are going to be at the Regency Ballroom with Zoso and the Iron Maidens Sunday, December 1st. Tickets are on sale now at access.com. That's AXS.com. And good morning, Zach. Where are you at now? Um, I'm out in California right now, just uh, with the compound, just having my Valhalla Java. <laughs> so uh, my own fourth one for the day. Yeah. And hit the iron, then, you know. Get ready for the uh, the Zach Sabbath dance a coming up with Zoso and the Iron Maidens. So that's awesome. I got to be honest, the weather looks a lot nicer at your end of California than mine right now. Oh, where you at? You up in San Fran? Yeah. Oh, I dig it. Well, what was it getting chilly up there or what? Uh, it's a little cold, but honestly, I'm a little worried about the wind noise. Mother Nature might be commenting on your interview a little bit. So hopefully that's oh, not boy. too much. <laughs> yeah, nothing wrong with that. Uh, but, I uh, think. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, um, you have played venues of every size and shape, and you're going to be at the Regency in San Francisco, which puts you within, like, sweating distance on people. And I was wondering, what's what's more special about playing clubs and theaters for you compared to, like, stadiums and amphitheaters? Because each one has their benefits, but you're going to be in a dirty club, and it's going to be awesome. No, I, I think uh... – I mean, I think if you ask any musician, I think a lot of the times uh, the really small ones, you always either remember them the most. I remember even with Zach Sabbath, I remember uh, I, I think we were in, might have been in Maryland, and I remember we were playing this small club underground. I forget where it was, but it was just, I remember the pipes over my head, the water pipes over my head, like, literally dripping because it was i mean it was so insanely hot between the the body heat and the fact that i had nowhere to go there was no way on. i mean it was literally beyond brutal and i remember you know looking at joe back there playing the drums like oh and i mean it's it was literally like being in a sauna i mean and I, the, literally the pipes were actually dripping you know the, uh, but it was it was pretty insane. But like you said, I'm, I'm talking about that one right now, just because you're not going to get that, you know, with with Pantera when we're playing with Metallica at MetLife Stadium. You know, so there's no but, sweat um, rain. No, I, I, yeah, I, I love it all though. I mean, I, I really, Dave, if you ask any musician, as long as somebody shows up, whether you're playing in a phone booth or you're playing Madison Square Garden, it, it just as long as you're playing and. You know, you're a musician. You love playing. So that, that's all that matters at the end of the day. There's no bad house if you got a good crowd. Exactly. Um, so I just rewatched the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony. And I thought it was obviously amazing watching Ozzy go in, um, having been like the godfather of all things that, that we do. And I wondered, because you were on tour with Pantera and Metallica, and that you and Robert and Wolfgang all participated in playing Ozzy songs at the induction ceremony, um, did you guys have any kind of like pre-induction hang time of like, dude, you remember how this goes? Or, or hey, what are you going to wear? <laughs> no, yes. Uh, we, and we were all borrowing our eyeliner and rouge and our lip gloss. So it would match our fishnets and high heels. But, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, it's, no, it's just, we, we, uh, we rehearsed for, you know, uh, we had like two days where we could actually just go over the songs and figure out, you know, the tune. So, I mean, it, yeah, it was, it was no big deal. I mean, it's like, uh, I don't think I, <laughs> I don't think I'm, it's kind of ingrained in my DNA at this point. I don't think I'm going to forget how to play my mom coming home or, you know, no more tears. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure if we ask Barbara, she'll yeah, say, you I, was like, I think I can sleep. remember those. So, you know, but no, <laughs> it, I, it was great. Wolfie crushed it. I mean, it was, and it was great hanging with all the guys. So, you know, uh, between Maynard, Billy Idol, and, you know, I mean, all the guys that were doing it. So it's just like, um, you know, that I'd seen before. So it was, it was definitely cool seeing everybody. I have never heard Billy Idol reach that range. He sounded completely different to me. I was amazed. Yeah, I mean, I mean all the guys, you know, I've, it, it definitely, I mean, for a lot of the fellas, it wasn't in their wheelhouse, you know, singing that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it was just like the fact that they got up there and Jelly Roll and all the guys and, and gave it their best shots. So, I mean, that's all that matters anyway. They had the balls to get up there and do it. 
Did anything happen backstage that was a like a fun story, or was it mostly business and hugs? No, oh, just everybody just chilling out. It was like super mellow and yeah, just no, no. There wasn't any like uh, it wasn't a Caligula fest backstage. It wasn't like an eyes wide shut party going on backstage. <laughs> No, nah, there was none of, none of that shenanigans going you on. You never no, know everybody, with an institution like the Hall of Fame. I mean. Yeah, no, it was just like everybody chilling. And then, like, uh, you know, you pretty much just stay out of the way because of the production. I mean, the production's like, insane. You know what I mean? I, I'm saying as far as, uh, you know, with all the with all the bands that are on. And, that, you know, it's just, like, wheeling everybody in, trying to make sure that it uh, – that everything – goes on time and everything like that so i mean it's kind of like i mean all the production people are just walking on eggshells backstage just trying to make sure everything you just stay out of the way you know uh speaking of giant production i noticed that chad smith had the john bonham style gong behind him even though it wasn't necessary for any of the songs which i love uh i feel like that gong is kind of like the same thing that a guitar player has when they get their first set of marshall stacks behind them you know yeah yeah, it's well, you know, we did have it up it. there. Well, it was just in case, you know, we broke into, uh, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody was going to happen. And, you know, <laughs> you never know when somebody might just yell it out at a, you know, while you're playing a keg party just to break into that one. So you have it at the end so you could use the gong. So, uh, yeah, you, you might need it for that. <laughs> so does Zoso have a Bonham gong on tour with you guys? Is there room for uh, that? Yeah, yeah. I think so. I think Bev, yeah, he has his gong with him. So, uh, I mean, they're amazing. I've known the guys for, I've known the guys for probably like eight years now. So, uh, but they're, they're amazing. I mean, they truly are. I mean, it's just like they crush it all the time. And then the Iron Maidens are amazing too. So we just had, you know, we just had all the, both of them out on the, uh, the Berserkers. So it was great seeing everybody and they crushed it. And, uh, so we were just thinking, it was just like, man, when we do this Zach Sabbath tour, we should all go out together. So here we are. So that's how you came up with the package. It wasn't uh, like a booking agent going, hey, let's put some tribute bands together. It was you going, hey, I love these guys. Let's do this. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, you know, me and Blasco were just talking about it. And it was just like, yeah, it'd be great just having having everybody out on the road. We'll be killer. Now, you are crazy busy with your schedule. It seems like there's a nonstop Zach here, Zach here, Zach here, Zach here. Go ahead. Uh, who keeps track of that for you? How do you how do you handle all that? And then go. Can I also throw a Zach Sabbath in there? Um. Well, no. It's just you know I have to buy my girlfriend you know Jordass jeans and candy shoes, so I got to keep working. <laughs> <laughs> See, you know, I mean, I, you know, I like bringing her out on when I bring her to the movies, so I can afford you know a popcorn and a, and a, and a soda pop, and then I can get her a slice of pizza, you know? So you gotta, you gotta put in the work. So, you know, you girls don't like to be disappointed. No, <laughs> we really don't. <laughs> oh, no, no, I, that, that's what I gotta do. So you and I are only about five years apart. So I, I think for my generation, we kind of discovered black Sabbath after we discovered Ozzy. And for me, like my first Black Sabbath introduction was Mob Rules in the heavy metal movie. And I had a complete disconnect that Ozzy sang for Black Sabbath back then. Cause you know, it was the eighties, there was no internet and I didn't have magazines and those magazines weren't on my grocery store shelves. Um, did you retroactively discover Sabbath or did you, um, were you a Sabbath guy first and then an Ozzy guy? No, I was I was in the Sabbath first, so yeah, you know I was like around eleven. I started, you know, I was listening to Sabbath, and then, uh, and then obviously when you know I, they broke up, it was uh, and then we were like Ozzy's got a new band, and you know and that and that had been when I just first started playing guitar, get serious about guitar, and you know they were like, oh, they got this guy Randy Rhodes, and he's amazing, you know, so we were, it was like. I, I remember vividly all of it, you know, just a, a super exciting time. And then, uh, and the, my first concert I ever saw was Mob Rules at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. So, uh, yeah, without a doubt, it was amazing. So, you know, when the lights went down and just, it just, it was crushing. So, uh, yeah, but that's, that was my, 
you know, Sabbath experience. But I, yeah, I, I found out about Ozzy with Sabbath first. I did, I didn't find out about him, you know, solo, and then went back. It is funny because you know it's it's like people's introductions to things. I remember Dario, who plays with us. I remember, you know, for him, he's because he's younger. He was it was Van Van Hagar first, and then he went back and you know to all the Dave records. So it depends on, you know, I mean, even with me. I remember when I first heard Elton John doing "Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds" on Sonny and Cher show in '75. I thought that was a, one of his songs. I was just like, you know. Our next door neighbors, the Smiths, had you know eleven kids, six boys, five girls, and Scotty was my buddy. He was the youngest. His older brother was forty-four years old, and we were like eleven, twelve years old. So, but I remember, uh, I remember, yeah, I went over there. I said, "Oh man, I heard this Elton John song. It's amazing, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds." He was like, "That's a Beatles song, you moron!" And they beat me profusely. And then you know, after that. I, you know, your reference point, I remember I saw, we went to see James Bond, Moonraker, with uh, Roger Moore. And I was like, oh, yeah, we just saw James Bond. It was amazing, you know? And he, he goes, that's Roger Moore. Wait, that, that's a James Bond? Sean Connery's <laughs> James Bond. And they beat me profusely again. So, you know, I took a beating a lot. You know, so I just, I, I, after that, at, at that point, I just never talked again. <laughs> Well, and now with kids, with the internet, everything happens at once. There's no, there's no chronology involved. Everything is just kind of like you put one person's name in and you get everything they've ever done. And when I put your name in and I kind of like do the Price is Right scroll of your discography, I notice that you are re-releasing or releasing the Zach Sabbath versions of all the Black Sabbath albums. And I'm thinking that there's going to be some kids out there that come to a Zack Sabbath show and rediscover albums of Black Sabbath that they didn't listen to because they knew Black Sabbath existed, obviously, but you're bringing it out as new music to them. Yeah, well, good. I mean, I, just like me with the Elton John stuff. I mean, or, you know, I'd be like, I remember, uh, you know, or Guns N' Roses putting out Knocking on Heaven's Door. I'm sure, you know, like my nephew thought that was a Guns N' Roses song. You know, he didn't know it was a Bob Dylan song, so... But, you know, then you find out, you find, you know, the other artists, the original guys that wrote it. So uh, as long as you get into it, it's a reference point. It's, you know, it's keeping Sabbath out there. It's all good. So speaking of Dario, um, after you were like the anointed one, chosen guitar player of Ozzy Osbourne, it's a, it's a really exclusive group. How does the anointed guitar player choose a guitar player? Um. Well, no, Dario, I, you know, he, he can make an amazing chicken piccata. Also, his uh, chicken parmesan is amazing as well, you know, being that he's Italian. So, uh, that it wasn't was pretty the much, bottom. Yeah, that was pretty much the qualifications. I mean, the guitar <laughs> playing. And just to make sure, you know, girls really think he's sexy. So, you know, we know sex sells and who's really listening to the music anyway. So, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So he fits right in. Yes, yeah, those are the criteria. Pretty much, these are the main things we're, you know, uh, concerned about. But uh, no, Dario's amazing. I mean, he plays piano, he sings. Now he's got his new band, you know, Dark Chapel. So, and he's producing that. So, I mean, he does it all. He's completely marriage material for all the ladies out there. He does. He can do his taxes. He does laundry. He does dishes. <laughs> makes his bed. You know, he does it all. This, this guy is he's, he's perfect. He's just a he's a complete package. But uh yeah. no, Dario yeah, Dario's amazing. So uh but no, because like whenever if I'm playing guitar, he can play piano and, and when I'm playing piano he can shred all the solos. It's he's he's amazing, hands down. And he sings too, so and like you said, he does dishes, his laundry does it all. <laughs> How did he get on your radar? Uh, actually, Blasco actually brought everybody on my put on, on my radio radar. He uh, even with Jeffy, Father Jeff on the drums. He was playing within this moment and everything like that. And he was like, you know, uh, when the cover, when Father Chad wasn't playing with us, uh, Chad had you know he was jamming with some other people because he, he couldn't do it. So it was like when Jeff had to fill in for Chad, that was because of Blasco. You know, just the connections, people. And I think that's how it works with everybody. It's just like, you know, uh, 
if you need somebody for something, it's just, well, bro, I got one of my buddies that actually does this. So, you know, I think with everything, you know, you get somebody to do the roofing on your house. It's like, Zach, I got, I know one of my friends does that. Okay. Let me hire him. You know? So. So it's completely the opposite of how you ended up in Aussie, but also kind of the same, right? Cause I mean, you, yeah, you heard I mean, on- well, you know, with the Aussie thing, it's all connections and it's all who, you know, I mean, it, it really is the truth. I mean, that's, that's the story of life. Uh, you know, because I was playing in clubs, and I remember, uh, you know, when I was with Zyrus, when we, we were jamming and we were playing at Close Encounters, there was like 10 people in the place, and I mean, that's being kind. But, uh, you know, it was just like Dave saw me playing, Dave Feld. I still talk to Davey all the time, so he was just like, hey, do you ever think about auditioning for Ozzy? I'm like, well, no, I thought about, you know, winning the lottery, too, and, you know, hanging out with Jimmy Page and going for a slice of pizza. But I, I don't know how I'm getting in touch with that. I'm making any of this happen. So he was like, no, my buddy Mark Weiss, and Mark's a legendary photographer. So, you know, all those pictures of Ozzy with the, the pink tutu on and the boxing gloves and all those, you know, the circus magazine covers. And, I mean, Mark's just a legendary photographer. So he, he goes, Mark's my buddy. He goes, if you can get me a tape or a picture, I'll get it to Mrs. Osborne. So... Like right there, that's, you know, if I hadn't run into Dave, I wouldn't be talking to you right now. I'm a host on the Monsters of Rock cruise and Mark Weiss brings his book on the cruise with, and, and appears and uh, talks about the photography and it's it's amazing. He's a great guy. I did not know that he helped facilitate you into Ozzy though. That's awesome. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Him and, so it is Mark, all who and Dave, you know. Mark and Dave got me, got the tape to Mrs. Osborne. So yeah, without a doubt. So it was... uh. Like you said, it's all all connections. I think that's how it is with everybody. Well, speaking of connections, um, you are on tour also with Pantera right now as the touring guitar player. And are you guys mostly like flying in and flying out to gigs? It seems like it's all, uh, it's not really on tour, right? You kind of fly in. Yeah, from I mean, well, we're getting ready to do, we're getting ready to do a, yeah, we're getting ready to do a full blown tour over in Europe pretty soon. So, uh, after the Zach Sabbath run uh, ends in January, you know, like January 12th, I think uh, a week later, we're doing, uh, the, you know, the Pantera celebration rolls. So I think we're going to be over in Europe for, I think, six weeks. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And then uh, after that run, uh, Zach Sabbath plays over there as well. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I, I love when I'm over in Europe as well. So it's, um, it's going to be a great time. So everybody wants to know how this Pantera celebration is going to continue in the next couple of years. Is it something that is going to be preserved in amber with what you guys ha are doing now? Or maybe when you're sitting around, not sitting around, but when you're on tour together and you're all in the same bus or in the same hotel, is there going to be some writing that takes place? Um, potential live album, that sort of thing. Well, no, it's all up to, you know, Philip and Rex. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's real, I mean, it's real easy peasy. I mean, we, we just hang around and, you know, if Rex is just like, hey, fellas, let's just put this in the set or whatever, or Phil's like, you know, let's try this or whatever, then we, you know, uh, me, Charlie, learn it, and then we'll, we'll put it in the set. So uh, that's that's where it's at. But it's just a, it's a great hang because everybody in the crew and everybody out there, we've all known each other for years. So, I mean, even with the crew people, it's just like whether they've been out with Ozzy when I was rolling, it, you know, on the No More Tears tour, you know, everybody knows everybody. So it really is like a huge family vibe out on the thing. So, uh, you know, it, it's a great time for sure. And seeing okay. so many people taking a, you know, taking a trip down memory lane, you know, the Pantera faithful. And then, you know, that had, had saw Pantera back when they were playing clubs in front of five people, you know, so you have that, you have the Pantera faithful taking a trip down memory lane. And then you have all the new kids, which is amazing. Cause I mean, Phil every night, he's just like, how many people saw Pantera back in the day? And, you know, like I said, you have the Pantera faithful. And then when he goes, how many people, this is, this is the first time hearing these songs live. It, it really is mind blown how many young kids, because they never, you know, when the band ended, they just hear about the, when the guys took a break, they hear about 
the legend of Pantera, you know, like not seeing like the legend of Sabbath. And now I never got a chance to see Sabbath. So when they got back together, it's, it was just like, wow, I, now I can go see him with Ozzy and Bill and Tony and Geezer back when they did the Ozfest back then. That was like a huge, big deal, you know, for everybody that never got a chance to see it because you were too young. So uh, it's just, I, I think it's a, it's a beautiful thing. And you're keeping Dime and Vinny's, you know, what they created with Philip and Rex, this, this amazing thing. So, uh, you know, that's what I, I think it's a great thing. It's beautiful. So it's basically a fluid thing. It, it is what it is now. And if it keeps going great and if it changes or if the guys decide to do something different with it, then you're all on board. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, for 2025, I, we're rolling right now. It's just going to be all Pantera all year long. So, you know, that's that's what's going on right now. Go over to I Europe, saw- then we'll be back in the States, and then we have a bunch of Metallica shows. So, yeah, it's awesome. I saw you guys twice on the uh, Metallica tour, and then I was at Aftershock, and it was – it's a very different vibe, that big – big stadium kind of somebody else's stage with a, a shorter set versus the Pantera headline show. Um, if is that, can you tell people? Cause that's what I want to, I, I kind of want to tell people like, if you're going to go see Pantera with Metallica, fantastic. But also if you're somebody who didn't see Pantera back in the day, you kind of need to go again to get the full experience. Cause at Aftershock, I saw like, Sonny and Eddie Muscles and Grady and all these people that I remember from the nine, the early, the mid nineties. And oh, you're yeah, right. Totally. It's a hundred percent family. And it, and it's as much Pantera as it could be Pantera without the brothers. And that just warms my heart. My cold black heart just explodes. Yeah. Without a doubt. And we, you know, we got Rita out there. Yeah. Everybody it's just, and you yeah. know, Rita has, you know, selling all the, all the dime bag experience and everything like that. She brings the whole trailer out here with her the whole time. So, you know, it just, like you said, we're celebrating dime and Vinny every night. It's awesome. Is Rita going to be in Europe with you too? Yeah. I'm sure Rita will be popping over there without a doubt. Oh, fantastic. You no, know, cause yeah. Cause she usually has the, the whole dime yes. bag set up every, every show. So it's, it's awesome. And she does that at festivals with or without Pantera, too. I mean, she's really been out there, boots on the ground, you know, keeping the legacy alive. Not that it needed help, but she has definitely been out there, you know, just representing this whole time. And Yeah, without a doubt. Been, like when I do the Jimi Hendrix experience, it's just, you know, it's awesome. It's, bringing metal it's, to I the mean, masses. Totally. She's doing the same thing with Dime, which is, which is beautiful. So when it comes to um, keeping metal alive for the masses, who are some of the new guitar players that you think are worth watching? And who are some of the building block guitar players you think that some kids might need to or might want to rediscover in in the whole like Google search of what's good with music? Well, I mean, uh, well, you got Father Richie Faulkner, uh, Garrett James Nichols. Uh, my one son is really digs off. Uh, uh, Tim Henson, he's like insane. And then, uh, no, it, it it truly is awesome how many great guitar players, you know, even on Instagram and stuff like that. I think it's, uh, I remember a while ago, somebody was like, oh yeah, guitars, you know, dead. Or what? I was like, what, what rock are you living on that? I was just like, you, apparently you're not on Instagram or any social medias where you're seeing any of these younger guys playing. So... Or at a guitar center on a Saturday. Uh, which is really, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, which is a really an awesome thing. So, I mean, you know, because I mean, some of these guys have just absolutely mind blowing technique and everything like that. So, you know, they're putting the putting the work in, and it's 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 awesome to see. Who would be some of the building block guitar players that you think kids today may not be aware of that they should try to rediscover? Like, who's who's the real Google search? that kids who, who love guitar, rock music should know if they don't? I mean, it's not that they should know. I mean, you got to play just whatever it is that you love and what moves you. You know, that's what you should be playing. But, you know, on, on your own, I mean, I, I think anybody, if you, if you have a love of the instrument, if you have, you have a love for anything, 
you know, so you just, you always go back and see who, who came first. I mean, I'm just saying, it's just like, if you're into baseball and you love Derek Jeter, well, I mean, you, you go back and you're going to find out who Mickey Mantle is, who Lou Gehrig is, who Babe Ruth is, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, for me, it would always be, uh, now that's obviously before the internet, but it was just like when Randy Rhodes, I remember somebody was like, uh, you know, like Dougie's older brothers, I mean, uh, my one buddy Scotty, his Dougie was older brother was like, I showed him, you know, cause I was in the Randy, you know, Randy Rhodes. So he just goes, Oh man, I thought that was Mick Ronson. That guy must really dig Mick Ronson. And I, I was like, I never heard of Mick Ronson. So then I, I went and found out that, you know, cause Randy was like, Mick Ronson was his guy and, you know, with the Les Paul and then the haircut and the whole night, I was just like, wow. And it was just, uh, but that's how you learn, you know, you go back or you'd read articles and then, you know, Randy saying he liked this guy, he liked that guy, and then you, you go check him out, you know? But, uh, yeah, I think that's up to any, the individual. You know, you educate yourself on, on the history of things, too. Yeah, I just don't understand how, well, you know, I remember even when the first time I started playing a Les Paul, I didn't realize it's named after Les Paul. I just thought that was the name of the guitar. You know, I mean, it's like, no, that's actually a person. You know, it's just like, oh, okay. And then, then you just, you check it out and you, and you find out who Les Paul is. So, uh, but no, there isn't, it's not that, you know, you need to know who Jimmy Page is and Tony Iommi and Frank Marino mm -hmm. and Jeff Beck and Robin Trower and all these, Richie Blackmore and all that, you know, obviously. I mean, those guys are the rock of Gibraltar and the foundation, all this stuff. But uh, you'll, you'll find out on your own. You know what I mean? It's just like if you love Eddie Van Halen, then you're like, oh, you know, Eddie really loved Eric Clapton. You know, for a younger kid, they're like, well, who's Eric Clapton? They're like, well, that was who Eddie really liked. Then you go back and you hear Cream and everything like that, and you're like, wow. So, you know, it's just like being in the bodybuilding, I love Dorian Yates, but like, how do you not know who Arnold Schwarzenegger is? You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I didn't even know he did bodybuilding. It's like, how, how do you not know that? You know? I think at this point, people don't remember that he was the governor. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's, I mean, that, that is kind of funny, though, how, you know, I, I noticed even with all the information, a lot of young kids don't know the history on certain things. You know what I mean? So we're not knowing Randy Rose was in Quiet Riot. It's just like, how could you not know that? I you think know, a so lot I, gets I mean, lost. Yeah. I mean, you know, mind you, you know, people, if they're interested in something, you know, I mean, if they really love something like the, the Kardashians or something like that, you know, when the TV show was huge, they can name you everybody on the show. It's just because they have an interest in it. You know what I mean? So you can't fault people. I understand. So they'll put in the work. The kids will figure it out. Yeah. They I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You figure it out yourself. Uh, so at, at Aftershock, I saw your guitar boat, and it didn't look like you're taking a ton of axes on the road. What are you carrying these days? What's in the boat? Uh, fiddles. So, you know, yeah, I got I got a ton of them out there. And what are you talking about, the Aftershock thing with the uh, – with, Yeah, with the was it just – yeah, is, is it is – it how many – how many – Does it, do you have, like, a whole different set for each band that would track? Um. Well, no, obviously with Black Label, there's going to be more guitars because it's me and uh, Dario. But no, there's probably, I'd take about eight guitars, eight fiddles out there with me. You know, some people, they switch they switch guitar every other song because they need a new tuning and they don't have time. <laughs> so yeah, no, without, it's, yeah, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, it's just like, uh, well, I mean, we do the VIP guitars and everything like that. So, I mean, the Pantera things, uh, it's definitely simplified in, in that it's only one tuning for the entire night. But, uh, so, but yeah, if I, you know, want to break out different, different fiddles and stuff like that, but with Pantera, I just mostly use the Warhammers because, you know, it's got the Floyd on it and everything like that. Imagine They're going to be doing the, the same time stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, you joke a lot about pop artists and, you know, I, I've heard you drop a ton of like Bieber and Taylor Swift jokes, but you really do listen to a much wider variety of music than metal. Well, I'm not and... joking about them. I mean, no, I mean, yeah. they're amazing. They're amazing at what they do. It's just obviously not the world we roll in, but, uh, no, but, um, yeah, it's just, I actually, uh, Sabrina Carpenter, she was actually over here at the house. This, this is probably 
I don't know, maybe eight years ago, you know, because a buddy of ours manages her. And this is when she just started doing the Disney thing before she's where she's at now. And it's just like, yeah, she was sitting in the house playing piano with our son, you know, with Sabatini. And it was just like, and now she's, forget about it. Ginormous. <laughs> but I mean, that's, yeah, I, I mean, but like, actually, that's that music. I wouldn't even, I couldn't even name you anybody's songs. What would even be some? They're doing, yeah, they're, they're doing stadiums, and I, I'm like, I, I can't even tell you what they sound like. But you know, because it's, a, I mean, obviously Madonna and everything like that back in the day was on MTV, so you, you'd always hear it. You know, so now there's no MTV, so it's just like if you're, it really truly is amazing if you're not, if you're not seeking it out or listening to it, it's like you wouldn't even know. That's why I always thought it was pretty amazing when somebody when Zeppelin would be on or a Sabbath day and like someone would go, Who I don't know any Zeppelin. I was like, How could you not know any Led Zeppelin? They're like, I don't listen to that stuff. You know, because they're listening to rap or whatever, you know. So I was just like, Oh wow. But yeah, pretty much the same That's thing. That's why I'm over here still trying to keep radio alive, brother. <laughs> yeah, without a doubt. Well, people like their thing, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. Well, it, but it used to be, it used to permeate society, right? Everywhere you went, somebody had the radio on and you would hear what was new across genres because there'd always be somebody with a different radio station on. And now everybody's got their earbuds in. Yeah. Or, or they're listening to what they like, you know, no, I well, agree. What's in your earbuds lately? Um, I, I think I, I'm pretty much like everybody else. I, I listen to, you know, you listen to your staples and the stuff that you loved when you were 14 years old. So it, it's pretty much, I'll listen to that. And then, you know, when I'm lifting, I'll just listen to like, I'll put on, uh, you know, just classic rock and stuff like that. You know, just mellow stuff or whatever. But, uh, I was, you know, and then you have on my thing, I'll put like rock hits from 1982, the Scorpions will be on there, no one like you, whatever. And but it'll play everything that was on the radio in '82, everything that was on the radio in 1971, everything that was on the radio in 1986. Uh, you know, so this way you're just hearing a whole bunch of different things that were pretty much on the radio back then. So I noticed that everyone kind of seems to have a place in the uh, the Wilderverse or the WCU. Um, you know, Dime is a saint now and everyone's either a brother or a father or a, um, a king or everybody's got kind of a designation. How, how did that start with you? Oh, just a running joke all the time. It was just like, uh, it was, but I think it was either religion or somebody. We were just solving the problems of the world. I think Slitzy, cause, uh, our buddy Slitzy's, Jewish, and then we were saying like, yeah, in order in order to be a father, and then he was like, well, Zach, I would be rabbi, you know, uh, and then I just go, <laughs> just to cover, cover everybody, you know, whether you're a Satanist, you're an atheist, you're Catholic, you're Jewish, or whatever, you know, we just go, oh, yeah, there's a, there's a buddy Tom over there, he's a, he's a, he's a Catholic rabbi, Satanist, atheist, so. <laughs> So you don't disappoint anybody or upset anybody. <laughs> so you pretty much got everything covered. But, uh, yeah, and just how confused everybody is. So we just go, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. But that's how that stuff all came about. It was just a tour joke that never went away. <laughs> yeah, just like, you know, Father Tom over here. You got Father Andy, you know, you got Rabbi Andy over there. So, yeah, it was just, uh, it, that, that just became the running joke and it's still here. Well, speaking of running jokes, uh, I've been watching you do stage walks on Instagram for a while now, and <laughs> they're hilarious. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, how did that start? Where where do the action figures come from? And is it to the point now where people are sending them to you and you have a choice, or is it always like the top few? No, just us being a bunch of idiots like we always are it's just like man i remember like the first time i seen my one buddy was just like that's got to be the stupidest thing i've ever seen i go exactly that's why he's why barb's with me that's what i provide and that's what i bring to the table it's one of my superpowers but uh yeah so it's just the sillier it is the better so uh yeah so obviously the ultimate stage walk so we got the warrior and we're you know Whatever co-host he's got that, whether it's the Macho Man, Big Van Vader, or whoever, 
what other classic wrestling characters I had. So I had Bubba Dudley out there with us at one time, Father Jericho, all the guys. So, uh, yeah, it's just pure comedic shenanigans. It's awesome. Do you, do you keep up with wrestling or do you just have like the classics? Well, mostly the classic guys and obviously, uh, you know, Bubba Dudley and then Father Jericho over there, you know, just because they're my buddies. But uh, no, it just, yeah, I mean, the wrestling thing is still ginormous. They just, you know, the last WrestleMania and everything like that with Dustin Rose, it was beyond huge. It's crazy because it's now um, either bigger or almost as big or as big as baseball on television. Like people are watching wrestling more than they're watching regular pro sports. And I think it's coming for football next. Well, there you go. Well, you know, I mean, if it's good and people enjoy it, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, also speaking of Barbara Ann, uh, the two of you have one of the longest marriages in rock and roll. And those seem to be few and far between. And I noticed that you talk about how important it is to buy your nice things. And I've heard you say in the past that the foot rubs are crucial. Uh, what would be the Zach Wilde's, uh, you know, tenets for a successful long-term marriage in the rock and roll industry? No, uh, I mean, you have to like your situation. I mean, I got, it, it really is the truth. I mean, you know, because we'll talk about it with any of my buddies or uh, in that. No, like who who wants to be miserable? I, you know, I I don't know, especially when you get older. I mean, it's just like you can pick and choose your friends and whatever. If somebody's a tool bag, you just cut them off. Goodbye, and that's that. I mean, you just actually get up and leave the table, and never see them again. So you know, it really is the truth. I, I because I'm not going to argue with anybody. It's just like okay, right? Well, like, yeah, at the end, it's just like all right, cool. You just get up and leave. And then never see them again. So, uh, you know, you don't even get into an argument. There are no arguments. It, it just, you just leave in silence. And that's that. Goodbye. Actually, you don't even say goodbye. You just leave. So get the up secret to being happy is just getting out when you're not happy. No, uh, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, I'm like, in any situation you're in. I mean, if, if you're miserable, it sucks. I mean, like, what, it's just like, I, I'm out of here, man. And you don't even have to argue. You just get up and leave. And that's that. So, last but not least, uh, what do you decide on a set list for Zach Sabbath? I mean, this um, December 1st at the Regency Ballroom in San Francisco with Zoso and the Iron Maidens. Um, how do you put that set list together? San Francisco, do you put any thought like that? Or is it kind of a, a static set list for the whole tour? Yeah, once, I mean, I think it's pretty much like that when – every band I've ever been in. I mean, whether it's, it's uh, whether we're playing with the boss, you know, with Oz and then, you know, black label or, or whether we're doing the Pantera celebration or the experience Hendrix thing or anything, it just, it's like a Broadway musical. Once you, once you get it down, it's just like, that's the way it goes. Cause then you have all the lighting cues and whatever. Right? It's just like, and then guitar changes and everything like that, and all the and let's not forget all the dance moves and everything like that. So you know, it's it, the choreography. It, it basically goes according to the choreography. So whatever the dance moves are, you you got it. People are showing up to see the soft shoe and the tap dancery. So and <laughs> the sexiness. So you know, like I said before, no one's really listening to anything anyway. So just as long as the dancing is okay, that that that's what the set is pretty much decided upon you were way ahead of the tiktok trends that's for sure uh, we, we knew it was coming <laughs> awesome thanks zach we'll see you on sunday december 1st at the regency ballroom in san francisco with zoso awesome. and the iron maidens and of course the mighty zach sabbath yeah at access.com that's axs.com